about that. Amen. So today we're going to continue our series called "We Need Why We Need Community," and uh, we'll be discovering and rediscovering the importance of being in the community of faith and the benefits that come from being in community. Amen. And today's title is called this, uh, What Builds Relationships and What Destroys Relationships. We're going to be looking at what builds relationships, but also what destroys relationships. And this verse of scripture in Romans chapter 12, verse 5, is our theme scripture for the next couple of weeks. It's this. It says, since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other and each of us needs all the others. Don't you love that scripture? Look at it again. Since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other and each of us needs all the others. Turn to the person next to you and say, we need each other. Amen. Come on. We need each other. There's no question about that. Truth bomb, the thought is this, is that we were wired for community. We were wired for relationships. The heart of community is relationships and relationships is the glue that keeps it all together. Amen. And the truth is, without exception, we need community. We need to be in constant community in our relationship with God, but at home and also in our faith community as well. And the thought that we shared last week is this, happiness doesn't come from being independent, but being interdependent. From interdependence comes community and we all need community to grow. We said it a couple of weeks ago, he who grows alone grows. You didn't say that with much gusto. He who grows alone grows. Weird, amen. We need community and we need to be in the community to grow. And the key thought that we had, wanted to share, in isolation we survive, but in community we thrive. In isolation We survive, we just get along in life and life just ticks over and we sort of survive from day to day, from week to week, year to year. But in community, this is where we learn what it means to thrive. And what does the Bible say about how our community is to look like? What are some of the the key thoughts about when God looks at us, how are we meant to look as a community in relationship with one another? Well, there's a few scriptures that I want to throw out. This morning in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially, everyone say especially, especially those who are in the, in the family of faith. Next one in 1 John chapter 4, 11, it says, Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. Amen. One amen. Amen. We sure should ought to also love each other. And then the last one in Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, I love this. Agree with each other, loving one another and working together with one heart and one purpose. When I look at those verses of Scripture there, I believe that the Bible teaches us that our relationships are to be tinged with sincere love for one another. I should get more amens than those three little quiet ones then. That when God, when we look at those verses of Scripture, the local church should be tinged with a love for one another. Amen. That more than anything else, God calls us to love one another. In fact, we said last week, and we've been saying it probably more than last week, that the whole lesson of life is learning to love. That's the whole purpose of life is that we learn what it means to love. To love God with all of our heart, soul, mind and strength and to love one another. Amen to love one another. So God is into community. He established it. God is into relationship because He's a relational God, um, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But we want to look at this morning, what are some of the things that build relationship and some things that may destroy relationships? Well, number one, the first one is this. Thinking different is wrong. Thinking different is wrong. Just because someone is different Potentially, we may think that they are wrong. In fact, I love this thought, God loves variety, amen. Aren't you happy about that? Otherwise, we'd always be eating Brussels sprouts. I don't like Brussels sprouts, I think they're terrible. But God loves variety. Did you know that there's not one snowflake that ascends from the clouds and arrives on the ground that is not different? Did you know that? That this little finger here, this this fingerprint here, There is no other fingerprint like that on the planet. Never has, never will be. Amen. I I love that finger. Amen. It's cute. You know, your eye print, there's there's, there's an eye print for your eye as well. Did you know that you have that significant, unique eye print that no one else 
before or after we'll ever have that, amen. God is into uniqueness. God is into variety and it's very, very important. If different was wrong, then God would have made us all the same. And imagine if the whole world was like you. (laughs) Give that man a clap. That wasn't the response, but well done. Healthy self-image in Jesus' name, amen. Listen to this. The key to deeper relationships is expecting, is accepting people's differences. We'll all see things different ways based on our upbringing, our education and our life experiences. What we must do is focus on the first thing that is first. And what is it that brought us all together? It's Christ and Christ alone, amen. We're in this building this morning and we're all from different backgrounds, from different cultures, from different educational standards, from different vocational standards, from different financial, whatever the case may be. And we all will see things differently, amen. But different isn't wrong. Just means that we're different. But at the end of the day, the thing that unites us all together is that we are family, Three amens again. I'm preaching far better than your amen and amen. Can we just pretend we're a Pentecostal church for the next 10 minutes? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Like everyone should be like me. Hey, hallelujah. Truth is we're family. In Christ, that's the, that's the commonality of, of, of who we are. But often what can destroy relationships is that we, we see things differently to others and because of that we can judge people or push people aside. We can't do that, amen. Some of our family members can be different. I think of my family. I have five other brothers and sisters. I have one person. I won't say whether it's male or female because that will indicate um, something and I, I won't do that. But this sister that I have, she's just, she's just did I just say sister? <laughs> She, she's totally different to the rest of us. The way she thinks and she acts and her behaviour, she's just bizarre, bizarre. But you know what? She's my sister. Amen? And so she's different and she acts differently, but she's my sister. So I'm not to judge her or to push her aside just because she views life differently to me. God calls me to accept her as my sister. And I think it's so important in the life of the church as well that we've got to understand that what can destroy relationships is thinking that different is wrong when different is not wrong. Relationships are strengthened as we accept each other's differences in the house of God. Amen. We will will not all agree on everything. Amen. And we will see things differently at times. But at the end of the day, we all agree that we are a part of the family of God united through and in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Feeling a little bit more Pentecostal up here, but we'll get there. Number two. Number two. So number one, thinking different is wrong, destroys relationships. Number two, this is a big one. Harbouring offence destroys relationships. Harbouring offence destroys relationships. If we really are a family, then there's always going to be some kind of offence to work through. In fact, listen to this. Being offended is inevitable. You've gone quiet again. I I thought there would have been, yeah, amen, that's right. Being offended is inevitable. Don't put hands up, but just come and tell me later. You're a part of a family and you've never been offended in your family. Go on, put your hand up then. Go on, give me a bit of Pentecostal love, yeah. Oh, oh, right. So in in your earthly family... There are opportunities to be offended. Same thing within your heavenly family, amen. I love what, can't remember who said it, but it's a good, good, good quote. Whether you appreciate it or not, you are going to spend far more time with your heavenly family than you are with your earthly family. And on earth is where we get to learn what it means to love and to forgive, amen. So the truth is at some point you will be offended. You might even be getting offended while I'm speaking right now. Well, if that's the case, I'm sorry about that. But I think it's just so important that we understand that sooner or later, someone's going to offend you. What I find is that often we don't want to resolve the issue and we like sweep it under the rug, right? Oh, they said something and it really hurt me. But don't worry, I'll just sweep it under the rug. 
The next time we come to church and they look at me with their crossed eyes and I, I get offended again, but that's okay, I'll suck it up, I'll sweep it under the rug. Then I come next week and they make a comment about my hair, hair um, 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 design, what do you call it? Hair, Rach? Hairstyle, a bit slow, Rach. Hairstyle, and that third offence, but what I do, I kick it under the rug. The problem with kicking it under the rug all the time is sooner or later you're going to slip up on that hill. You heard the old saying, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Amen. Jesus teaches us and gives us a few thoughts, guidance. So does Paul about offence and what to do with it. First one is this in Matthew chapter 6, 15, because remember, harbouring offence destroys relationships. I love it. Um, look, the word offence, offence. I get hurt and I put a fence around my heart, right? No one can get in. So important to understand that. But Jesus says this about offences in Matthew 6.15. But if you don't forgive others, your Father will not forgive your offences. Ooh, ouch. Seriously? Well, that's what Jesus says here. Then he talks about how to deal with offence. He says, if another believer sins against you, go privately and point it out, point out the offence. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. Jesus is talking about how to deal with it if you've been offended. You go to the person one-on-one and you just say, look, you really hurt. You know why often we don't want to do that? We don't want to want to own it and just be, be real with it? It's because in that moment, we have to be vulnerable. We have to be open to listen and go, oh, is that how you saw that? I didn't see it that way. But that often can stop us from dealing with offence. Friends, I love this last one by Paul speaking. He says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. (laughs) Anyone who offends you. He says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you. So you possibly from time to time, maybe should forgive. Now it says you must forgive, amen. Listen to this. When the body is full, excuse me, when the body is free of offence, the spirit moves. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good old Pentecostal. Hallelujah. Even put my leg up there. Did you see that? Glory to God. Amen. And we're just sharing this thought, what destroys relationships, offence does. Amen. Offence does. It it stops the flow of the Holy Spirit. So number one, thinking different is wrong, destroys relationships. Number two, harbouring offence destroys relationships. But resolving offences strengthens our relationships. Number three, this is an important one for us as well. Number three, what potentially can destroy relationships, I'll explain. Fostering insular relationships. Fostering insular relationships. Relationships. All of us have people that we get on better with than others. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. I know you all get on with me so well. It's ridiculous. That's not true. (laughs) All of us have people that we get on particularly well with. We seem to gel with them. Amen. And that's good. We all need to be in some form of discipleship setting where we can meet with one another and encourage one another and pray for one another. In fact, in Shell Harbour Community Church, following Jesus isn't something we just believe, it's something that we also do together, amen. But as a church, we must never lose the sight of the one. Clicks, clicky, being insular in our relationships will stop the church from growing, amen. People say, I want the church to grow, but in them they don't take the time to extend their circle of friendships. Are you and I broadening our our cycle of friendships? I want to say this this morning, um, if if I could just encourage, encourage us with this thought, that we are all on the hubs team. That's it. Thanks very much. Amen. Amen. We have a team in the church, it's called the hubs team, the prayer hub, the welcome hub, the family hub, the bicycle hub, the, I don't know, I can't think of anything else. But we have connection points in the church and they're designed to connect with people, amen. 
But I want to say this morning that we are all on the hubs team. We, we will never know. We, maybe we, we, we might not really fully appreciate. I thought it was a dog running down the corridor. <laughs> I did. You should go back to mum. But we all should be on that hubs team. Right, because we never know who's coming through those doors. Amen. Our pastor, Ross Abraham. And they are our pastors. He told a story, and I've never, never, never forgotten the story. Tells the story of this, this, this mother, wife, a few kids, got born again, been faithfully attending the church for three to five years, but not her husband. Husband wasn't saved, wasn't born again, wouldn't go to church, was one of those, if you walked into the church, the, the roof of the church would fall down and everything would be calamity, that sort of style. She's praying and praying and praying for him for quite a while. Thank you. Praying and praying for him for quite a while. One Sunday, he wakes up and says to her, I'm coming to church for the first time. But the question that is added to the end of that story is this. What would he discover if he walked into this church today? See, we, we all need to understand. We've got our relationships and that's lovely. And we've got our people that we're a little bit tighter with and that's fantastic. And we might be in our crew group and connect group and that's so, so vital to our spiritual growth. But we must make sure that every time we gather together, we are on the lookout for new people, amen. That we never lose sight of the one, amen. Never lose sight of the one. In fact, I challenge you at the end of the service, as soon as we say the benediction, you run to the back door there. Be a lineup of, I don't know, but be a lineup of people just waiting to say hello to the new people that are in the building this morning. Amen. Amen. So, number three, fostering insular relationships destroys potential relationships. Extending our relationships builds greater community. And if I could just have the, the band back up again this morning, the worship team, that would be great. Just as we conclude this morning, the greatest advice that Jesus gives us on building relationships is this. He says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Amen. 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 In Shell Harbour Community Church, we're dreaming of a church where everyone is in the world of someone. Amen. No one's left alone. No one's left isolated. We are all connected in some way. Amen. It looks like this. Paul puts it another way. Philippians 2 verse 4, we'll conclude this morning. He says, Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. Selflessness means a little bit less of me and a little bit more of you. It means I think less of me and more of you. What a beautiful church we are. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1, it says, Keep being concerned about each other as the Lord's followers should. Amen. Keep being concerned about each other as the Lord's followers should. Keep, that word there means being vigilant. Amen. As we go through this series about community, I want to say this morning again, with all gusto, community is God's answer to loneliness. Community is God's answer to defeat. To, to, Fatigue. Community is God's answer to defeat. Community is God's answer to despair. Community is God's answer to fear. Community is how we grow or we can only grow in and through and by community. Amen. In isolation, we survive. But in community, we thrive. Amen. And so as we conclude this morning, again to reiterate and highlight the whole thought, that no one can make you grow. No one can. We can preach all the messages in the world, sing all the songs. We can have all the most amazing connect groups, which we do, crew groups, which we do, and the amazing children's program, which we do, and the youth program, which we all that stuff that's there. But at the end of the day, none of that can make you grow. Growth as an internal choice that you make to say that I want to be in community. Because I know that in community, I grow. 
Amen. And so this morning, let me ask you the question. Are you in community? Are you in a community? Where potentially could you be in community? Tuesday night prayer meeting. That's like our community there. I see the the maintenance team during the week doing their stuff. They're in community there, amen. But potentially, what would that look like for you today? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank You this morning. Thank You, Lord, that You authored community and You authored relationship, Lord. You are a God of relationship that You continually draw us closer to Yourself and we are so grateful for that. But Lord, as people, we want to grow and we ask You today, Lord, help, help us, Lord, if there are people here today that aren't quite connected, Lord, then Lord, just help them with the next step, whatever that might look like, whether it be talking to the, the welcome hub, Lord, or the prayer hub, the family hub, whatever, just that next question, how do I get connected? And so, Lord, we are so grateful to You today. We're so thankful. We pray Your blessing on the rest of this day. We pray Your blessing over tonight as we meet and we gather again at 5.30. We pray that You will continue to pour out Your blessing, Your Spirit upon us. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. He is so faithful, so good, Amen. Wonderful. Well, I wonder, team, if we could just finish with a song. Yes, which one would you like to play? By the blood, blood. lovely. Amen, Amen. Thank you, everyone.